There's a growing problem in Connecticut and western Massachusetts. Homeowners have been hit with an unforeseeable expense after learning that the foundations of their homes are crumbling. The faulty foundations are due to tainted concrete sold from a quarry in Connecticut, which has now gone out of business. The repairs are in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's a nightmare for homeowners. Carolee McGrath sat down with State Senator Eric Lesser to learn more about the problem. Some constituents from our communities here in Western Mass have reached out to us because apparently there was a quarry in Connecticut that was producing a substance called pyrite, a very, very rare uh, substance that when uh, mixed with moisture uh, creates a, a cracking and a, um, and a degradation of concrete in basement foundations. And what we've ha seen happen is there have been some homes, in particular um, custom-made construction homes that were made usually between 1980 and 2000 that use this uh, this concrete from this very specific quarry have had this um, this cracking develop in their foundations and it's a potentially devastating issue because you need to replace the foundation in order to make sure the concrete is safe so what that would mean is putting the house up on stilts right excavating out the concrete, re-pouring a new foundation and putting the house back down. So it's really an item that's of, of pretty substantial concern and the quarry itself was lo is located in Connecticut. The business that ran that quarry is now gone right. and closed, of course, but we saw this developing in Connecticut over the last several years. Hundreds, even thousands of people in Connecticut have been impacted, and unfortunately it does look like communities along the Connecticut border here in western Massachusetts have had some impact as well. So we're still trying to determine the scope. You're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm sure, to jack up a house. Two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars is probably a conservative estimate of what it could cost. I mean, that would break people. It's awful. I mean, no one, almost no one has that no. kind of money lying around. And to add insult to injury here, to add even more concern, if you try to go to a bank uh, to take a loan out on the value of the home, you're all of a sudden in a home that has a unstable foundation right. so it's very hard to get a bank loan so you this is a this is a natural disaster I I feel this is a, an issue that was of no fault to the homeowner there right. was no way you could have tested for this additive no one even knew that this additive did this and homeowners insurance companies are telling us that they will only cover a full collapse of a house they don't cover partial collapse meaning what they're saying is is if the house completely collapses oh if you gosh. wait for the house to fall on itself they'll cover that but if you prevent that from happening by fixing the cracks in the foundation now that's not considered something that they cover so people are alarmed people are worried about this you know we've had reach out from realtors uh, who are concerned about the impact on on uh, house prices the other element that needs to be considered is these are often uh, very high value homes right. uh, they're homes that pay a lot in property taxes most of these homes are located in fairly small communities with fairly property tax dependent revenue for forms for their cities and towns and I've heard from a lot of selectmen from a lot of town clerks from a lot of town assessors who are worried that once the word gets out about this problem when homes get reassessed for property taxes those property tax receipts are going to plummet and what does that mean that means less money for teachers less money for firefighters less money for police and for roads and for park construction so this is a very big issue and we really need to get the word out to the public about uh, what a what a tough spot we're in. And is it clear if it's just one quarry that you're talking about? I mean, yeah. is, it, is there potential that there were others using the same material? So, so the answer is we don't know. Right. Uh, so we don't know everything, so you want to be careful about how far ahead you get on this. Uh, we do know that there is one quarry. It was owned and operated by a company called JJ Modus, which is based in Connecticut. That's where uh, the, um, the homes affected in Connecticut were impacted. That's also where we've been able to trace back the homes in Massachusetts that right. have been impacted. So folks who are concerned about this should go back to their records from their home construction. They should look up who supplied uh, concrete. They should maybe go back and talk to their general contractors about who was involved in supplying the concrete for their homes. Of course, this is not something most people no, pay we'll a lot of attention that, yeah. to or keep right. careful records on, but it's a very concerning situation. 
people uh, whose homes might fit this profile should get the, the test. You have to do a concrete core test. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy test. The other thing about this is it's not visible to the naked eye. A lot of these homes have finished basements. So, oh, right. you know, if you have sheetrock or you have wallpaper or you have paint over the, uh, over the concrete, you, you might not see the uh, degradation in the foundation. So if you have a home that fits this rough description, you know, if you were, um, if, if your home was constructed between the 1980 and 2000 or so and, and used this concrete from this quarry or might have, I'd really recommend that people uh, get the test done. Because the other thing we've seen, Carolee, is a lot of people are afraid to know. Oh, they don't want to know. I don't want to go down and test it, right? And, and you can appreciate how yeah. they feel that way because, um, again, you might not even realize that you're in a home with this kind of problem. And then once you do discover it, it's devastating right. because you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. Banks will run away from it because mm -hmm. uh, this is a, another example. You know, when people talk about a system being rigged, when people talk about about a system being stacked against no ordinary people, against ordinary families. Here's a great example, right? Someone lives in a house, they do everything they're supposed to, they get homeowner's insurance, they pay their property taxes, they, they maintain their property, they, they're responsible citizens doing everything they're supposed right. to do. All of a sudden they find out because of nothing they did, they have this random chemical that got added into their concrete 25 years ago, and all of a sudden there's, there's no one there to, to help, help them. them. Yeah. The insurance companies are running the other way. Division of Insurance can't do anything because of the riders that they say were placed on the insurance contracts. The uh, contractors are running the other direction. The concrete company's out of business. Everyone's going like this. And I think that's very sad. And I think that that's a, a kind of broader commentary, frankly, on where we're at in this economy.